Also members, we also participate in some outside external trainings, Target, which is um, coordinated through the FBI and higher education, we do those quarterly. And the City of Long Beach Emergency Operations and Disaster Preparedness also does quarterly meetings. This is what we have planned for um, the first six months of 2016. Um, again, more of, the, more of the same and um, a little bit different. We're gonna do some more tabletop exercises. Um, we're gonna try and do an active shooter tabletop exercises. We're scheduling that for May and some more to be determined. Um, like I said, we encourage faculty and staff to attend the trainings. The more people are thinking about, the more they'll be prepared. Thank you. Any questions uh, from board members? Trustee Zia. I do. Thank you, Margie, and um, your team for doing such a great job. Um, just a few questions. Um, I, th I really appreciate this comprehensive report, um, and uh, want to also welcome Lieutenant Darren Davenport. Um, so just a couple of things on these committees. Um, so on, uh, do faculty sit on all these committees, or which one of them do they uh, sit? I'm sorry, I don't know all the names and their associated uh, affiliation at the college. If you could just um, uh, provide some input on that, and then I have other questions. So on the... Um the Emergency Preparedness and Safety Committee, that is where we have our um, faculty representation. So that's uh, comprised of faculty and classified and management. Um, they can bring forth concerns. We discuss safety issues, drills, inspections. So that's where we have our faculty representation. And, and how often uh, do these committees meet? How um, uh, rigorous is it um, as far as um, prevention is concerned and preparedness? So this committee meets um, quarterly. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as, I'm not quite sure what your question is regarding rigor. In how deep do you go? Do you have like, um, reporting of what's happening um, at the college, what's happened, or what in the event of, like for example, you know, we had the Omqua tragedy. Did, did, was there um, anything subsequent to that that modified our plan, or um, we had to get into and get a little bit more in depth? So we last met in October, and yes, that is a concern of, um, of everybody at the meeting was the most recent shooting. Um, coming up in the new year, we are reviewing our active shooter plan, mm -hmm. and we have um, taken that under, and we'll look at that as a group, as a team, and provide recommendations. Okay, um, and w are we gonna have greater police presence at the college? Um, do you mean are we hiring more police? Yes. No. Um, okay. Is there a reason why, um, or perhaps on-call officers? Um, I know we recently gave about forty thousand dollars to the police, if I recall correctly. Um, just more on an on-call basis, if need be, um, to support our staff and um, in the event of an accident or emergency. As the lieutenant mentioned, the entire LBPD is on call for Long Beach City College in any incident. Um, obviously, we only have the one police officer, right, assigned to no. us? No, oh. no. It's easy. Yeah. We have one lieutenant assigned, okay. I believe four officers four and 13 security officers. And those are augmented by uh, any asset in Long Beach PD. Um, the contract for Long Beach PD, the board approves. So the staffing level is approved by the board. So if the board wishes to increase the staffing level, we can certainly address that <laughs> in the contract. Okay. But um, at this point, um, the staffing level is with what's in the contract. Uh, and um, I don't know if Lieutenant Davenport wants to comment on how readily available all the assets of LBPD are or reiterate that, but uh, I would allow him to answer that question. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we have a pretty well-staffed uh, patrol division and even higher when we have a uh, evening and day shift overlap. In the event of an emergency, uh, specifically for an active shooter event, um, 
I could assure you to say that every police officer in the city is going to be dropping what they're doing and resp responding to the school in the terms of a, a significant emergency at the school, as well as most likely the fire department. And if the need grows beyond our abilities, which uh, we haven't seen yet, we have the ability to call mutual aid uh, from other departments. And based on your experience, what's the average or typical response time to an emergency at the college or you know similar districts? Sure, so that's a good question, but it, it'll always depend. Uh, depending on the location of the event and the proximity of the officer patrolling the school, uh, it could be as, as soon as several seconds, depending on the proximity. But uh, we have officers on both campuses, uh, most all hours of the day. Uh, graveyard is our thinnest, uh, our thinnest staffing, but uh, during normal school hours, it should be very quickly. And, and as far as if a staff member um, would like to have police officers or a special um, service officer, I think is what they're called, um, yes. escort them, um, is that a, a viable uh, option for them? Are you, if it's, are you asking if it's okay to have an escort? Uh, if it's requested, yes, and if we have an officer available, we'll do what we can to provide that. And, and what's the timeline and from making the call to getting the escort on campus? If it's simply for an escort, it, that will come from an officer assigned to the campus, and it's based on his avail availability and the need. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you don't, uh, have you had that kind of re a request uh, previously? And uh, I have not, but it, okay. it has been done. Obviously, you're new, so. Correct. The <laughs> Long Beach PD has, uh, on many occasions, responded to escort requests. That is a service that is, that is provided through uh, the contract. Okay, great. Um, and as far as these uh, uh, items on slide 14, um, so, um, what is, and you have to forgive me, I'm not that as technologically savvy as you guys are probably are, maybe I'm having a senior moment. Um, the school dude's cell phone application, can you expand on what that is um, for the emergency operations plan? Yes, for those emergency operation team members, what we are working on is getting the emergency operation plan, which is right now in a binder or located on a server computer um, we are going to have it so that it can be uploaded onto their phone and they can have access to it wherever they are at. And, and what is it? It's our emergency operations plan. Okay, so it's, it's we really... We have a document that says what we will do in the case of an emergency. Oh. And it outlines in great detail um, our plan. And okay. they will have access to it. And, and by when are we going to have that in place? We're working on it currently right now. I would say it'll probably be uh, three or four months. Okay, and, the, and you mentioned that our doors were upgraded. Um, Not upgraded. I said our district standards are upgraded. Oh, okay, okay. So um, our, they were upgraded, and then uh, regarding the doors, um, I'm not sure, is, is that something that we're gonna see in the near future, and when when is that gonna happen as far as um, assessing ability to change out it, exiting door hardware, those kind of things. Um, what's the timeline? I'm going to let Anne Marie respond to that. So that is something that we're currently uh, reviewing and analyzing to see. You know, there's over 700 doors throughout both campuses that uh, will hold five or more individuals. And so we need to look at the age of the door and what type of lockdown mechanism will uh, be needed for that door. So it is something that we are going room by room looking at to see which type of hardware can be installed. Um, it will be something that would have to be bid. Um, and of course, this is if the, the board desires us to do this. Uh, we have a very, very rough estimate uh, that we think it could cost about $500,000 to uh, re-outfit the doors that would be necessary through both of the campuses. And so with the magnitude of that dollar amount, we would have to bid the project. Um, so it would take you know, some time, probably a year before we could get every door retrofitted. But as uh, Margie mentioned, we have changed our district standards. So the buildings that are opening up in the spring, both the C building here on the LAC campus and the GG building at the PCC campus do have the more current hardware where they have the lockdown capabilities and any new buildings coming online will have that same hardware. So it's just a matter of having to try to retrofit 
all of the other doors. And, and lastly, uh, what, are, uh, what efforts are in place to check in with faculty and staff to make sure that they're feeling safe? Well, we have a couple different ways. They can report to that community, uh, to, the, um, to this Emergency Preparedness and Safety Committee. That's one way to um, voice their concerns. Um, they can always, if they're feeling unsafe at any time, we always recommend that they call 911 and not hesitate. Um, that's that's the number one number one thing to do. They if if I can if I can add to them. that, um, thanks, Margie. Um, as uh, Margie mentioned previously, there are a number of training opportunities that uh, allow staff. Uh, the opportunity not only to receive training, but to also express concerns, recommendations. Um, we also have the College Planning Committee, um, as well as the Facilities Planning Committee, where we encourage discussions about safety to occur there. Uh, so, um, as well as, obviously, uh, most recently at the board meetings, um, uh, faculty and staff has expressed their concerns. So we're trying to create as many forums as possible. Uh, I also hold a forum with all the classified staff uh, every semester, and we most recently have been talking about safety and security. So we're trying to create as many forums as possible f so that staff feel comfortable expressing what they feel about uh, safety and security on campus, and it'll be an ongoing issue every semester. We will create as many forums as possible to allow people the opportunity. Why, and, and if I might add, President Oakley, we have also asked uh, the Long Beach Police Department to increase the foot patrols. And so they have done that in the last two months. Um, I know I've noticed more and more of the uh, police officers walking around throughout the buildings and throughout the offices. Okay, great. I certainly appreciate this report. Um, it's very uh, good. And what I'm going to do is check back with the internal stakeholders uh, and also my constituents in the community to get their feedback and see if there's anything else that I need to look into. And um, uh, I, I just want to bring to your attention, there's a program, I'm sure you're aware of it, that uh, a, a police officer leads, um, his name is Jason Lehman, and I know some of our students are involved in his program, and it's called Why Did You Stop Me? And um, I don't know if it's possible, it would be nice to look into that, perhaps we can have a presentation. It's about community and police officers coming together and working together, um, so I would certainly encourage us to look at that as well. And thank you again, Margie, great job, and to everyone on your team. Uh, Trustee Urchul Levin. Thank you. Just have a quick question uh, regarding the uh, planning manual, the emergency planning manual. Um, and I know you said that you're in the process of, uh, I guess, completing the manual. No, we have the, the manual's complete. We're okay. just uploading it onto a onto a cell phone application. Okay. So um, has the college had the opportunity to have an actual drill? Yes. Put the plan in operation? Yes. Actually, we just did one in um, October. We participated okay. in the California ShakeOut. Right. Uh, it gave us an opportunity to um, test our notification system as well as evacuate several buildings. And it all went very well. You know, we learned a few things, but it all went very well. The notification system worked fine. So, yes, we do. And do we have, and I, I know you were talking about the doors, um, but do we have... Um, staff monitors assigned to each of the buildings is that because i know that's part of the general yeah, part of the, plan. the building emergency yeah, coordinators yeah. yes okay all right thank you Great, thank you uh trustee baxter yes uh thank you uh, good job margie uh, just something that i've always been concerned about and that is the cameras on campus and i'm glad to see that you're working toward that especially in the um parking uh garage because um i think cameras are a deterrent uh, when people see them in place. So uh, I want to salute you on working toward that. Yes, great job. I'll take it. <laughs> the, uh, uh, a question I had and then a brief comment is on the, the new buildings that with the new standards for the doors, there was always a concern about potentially of somebody who could lock everybody in the room mm -hmm. and we could not get access because the doors were essentially barricaded. Is that an issue that, do we, do we have a way around that or is that just something that just 
you, you, there's no good way to answer that. You either lock a door or you don't lock a door. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean. So, so the, the concern, and, and that, I mean, I didn't know. I, that was the answer I originally heard, and the reason I raised it is because sometimes we go, we just lock the doors, but sometimes the people that you that don't want in the room are in the room, which brings me to my, rather my statement, and that is the preparation you're, we're doing here. Uh, you should all be commended. It is remarkable that the, 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 the words that we use today and the, the resources we, uh, that we have to spend, mental students that are dealing with mental issues, something that when I first came on this board, it was really not something that was addressed heavily. And now it's become more and more where we're required. We have liability, we have exposure. And so we're spending more time, and it's good to see that one will be coming on full time in that regards because it is an issue. Uh, I am pleased at the emergency preparedness because uh, another term that probably wasn't in our vocabulary years ago, uh, an active shooter compared to just a regular shooter, I guess, but uh, it's one of those frightening because of the times, active shooter is a, real, is, is a real scenario and how we address that, but also the emergency preparedness on the natural uh, events, earthquakes in this region more than anything else, how we're going to prepare for that. So I'm glad we're doing the planning that we can. Uh, this report is timely. Uh, and the fact that they, when, and it doesn't matter, we do have Long Beach Police Department here now, but I would tell you that was a concern in 2002, 2003, when we contracted out with the Long Beach Police uh, Department. One of the reasons was the fact of all the resources sitting behind the individual officers or security officer were sitting here, and I'm glad that came up in the conversation because you essentially are utilizing the entire Long Beach Police Department and all their and all their human resources. So, a good report. I'm glad that again where we focused on, especially the natural disasters that potentially could could hit this campus, and all the training we're doing, and sadly all the training in the world for some of the the horrific things we've seen lately, not just at community colleges but at other facilities. Uh, we can plan the very best, and, uh, and we are, and that's uh, to be commended. So I thank you for the report and everything that goes with it, and, and good job. And uh, maybe if somebody can invent a better mousetrap with the door that knows when the bad people are coming in, but um, that's just one of those, it's just a different time. And, uh, but uh, a good report, and at least it does present the fact of what we're doing here at the college, addressing a multitude of issues that years ago we probably never even thought about addressing. So uh, good job, and thank you very much. Yes, um, just uh, one final comment, and this is regarding the behavioral issues. And I know that I am preaching to the choir when, when I say this, but I think it's, it's important for us to say it, and I know that um, and as a former vice president of student affairs, I know how difficult it is to deal with some of the students who continue to have, you know, problems. And but again, I just want to caution us and, and to make sure that we don't end up profiling students as we look at their history, that we don't profile students and that we end up suspending students just you know, because of that history. I know it's, it's a very fine line. I know that. Uh, we have to protect the, you know, the students, that we have to be aware of the well-being of all of the students and the faculty and the staff, but at the same time, we have to be very cautious that we don't profile our students. Thank you. Trustee Archuleta, if I can respond to that, that is a concern of ours. Um, this college obviously provides open access to a community that, um, has uh, a number of challenges and we take great pride in ensuring that we have open doors to anyone in the community and we're going to keep it that way. Uh, having said that, we will do everything possible to identify threats um, and work with our colleagues in Long Beach PD um, to ensure that we provide safety and security. We, we have had a uh, number of incidents that have at least given us an idea of how well prepared um, our um, emergency responders are. We've had uh, bomb threats that uh, Long Beach PD has responded to. We've had an active, uh, we've had a, a shooting incident on campus which Long Beach PD responded to as well as a number of incidents um, that disrupted classrooms. So I, I think we've benefited from having Long Beach PD here for all these years. They've gotten to know our students 
Um, there was certainly a concern when Long Beach PD first got here that students coming from communities would not feel safe. But I think uh, much of the credit of the team we have here, they have worked very close with our students and I think have built trust over the years that I think has been very beneficial to the safety of, of everyone involved here. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your report. It was very thorough and informative and it's an area that we will continue to work in and work on. Uh, we move on to agenda item 3.3, design thinking and business process review. It's a presentation. Uh, and who's gonna give us this presentation, trustee? I mean, trust, uh, superintendent, president. Oakley. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, board president Otto. We have talked a lot about student success. We've talked about um, business process review and design thinking. and. To give us a better understanding of exactly what we're talking about um, on campus, we thought it'd be a good idea to, to bring this uh, presentation forward. So um, uh, I would let uh, either Vice President Gable or Peterson volunteer to introduce it since both of you have been working on this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we have uh, a wonderful team that have been uh, working to really think through the first phases of our design thinking, which has been led by um, our consultant, uh, Jack Robalt. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Jack and then his team. Thank you, Greg. Uh, good evening, distinguished members of the board, President Oakley and fellow colleagues. Uh, thank you for giving us a little bit of time tonight to present to you a report on the design thinking and business process review projects. With me tonight, I have Professor Peter Knapp, uh, Long Beach City uh, College student, Jennifer Hick, uh, financial aid advisor, Susanna Duran, and Chief Information Officer, Sylvia Lynch. Each of them will present a different section of the report. So as the discussions took place as to the best ways to undertake the work that of reviewing all the processes, we decided we needed to look at the structure of the processes and how the, those methods interact with our students and our colleagues. So we undertook a two-part project. The business process review looks at the structural integ integrity of our processes, how we can make them more efficient and effective, laying the foundation for the services that we provide. Whereas the design thinking considers the experience of the student and the staff working with those processes and the interaction needed. So if you take a second and look up, look at this, the slides, I guess you have them in front of you, sorry I'm not used to this room. Uh, we, we came up with the example of the house. If you look at the left hand side of this screen, that's, that's the BPR process. And you'll see that it's brown, it looks like a, a wooden house. That's the structural Piece. That's the building blocks or the bl brick and mortar that constructs a building, putting the walls, the doors, and the windows in. Looking at the right side of the screen, that's design thinking. And design thinking sets the flow, much like an architect would do when, built, when designing a building. How the air flows through, where the doors should be, uh, where the exit should be, things of that nature. In tonight's presentation, I'm laughing and you'll know why in a minute, in tonight's presentation, you'll hear a lot about the doors into and around Long Beach City College. It's not to be confused with the doors you just heard about. These are points of entries for our students that we just uh, dubbed as doors. So when we started looking at this project in uh, September, at, it went back further than that, but when we started actually setting it up, in, review, uh, in reviewing the areas that we wanted to study first, it was decided for design thinking that we would look at student um, financial preparation, making sure that they're ready financially to start college. And the support aspects of the students attending and planning to attend Long Beach City College. For the business process reviews, it was decided to work on financial aid from the application to the award 
academic services, catalog and scheduling processes, and purchasing from requisition to check. BPRs for financial aid and academic services are taking place now. We're doing financial aid this week and academic services next week. For purchasing, the interviews have been done and the results are being reviewed at this point. The first stage of the design thinking, the student financial preparedness, is complete. Presentation tonight will center on the early results of design think the design thinking effort and more more on the BPRs and the second stage of design thinking will come at a later date. At this point I'd like to turn it over to Peter Knapp. Thank you. While we tend to think of potential students entering LBCC through the traditional front door of the admissions office, the reality is that students come in contact with our college through numerous alternative doors, most often the college website. Person to person though, Many times, students, staff, faculty, and administrators all act as the first face of LBCC. Tours, student clubs, meeting with faculty members in a discipline of interest, student athletes being recruited by coaches, academic and financial counselors, reaching out through workshops, and so on. All of these points of contact are opportunities for a positive experience. But with such a large institution, how do we ensure that information be shared as consistently as possible? One of the goals of design thinking is to first identify the paths students can and need to take and identify where those paths can break down, such as lack of academic or financial preparation. Consequently, how are they directed to the services they need? While the matriculation and counseling processes provide the ideal information students need to succeed, an open access institution with limited resources does not guarantee that that information is internalized and properly applied in class, program, or even life choices which are best for one's education. Our discussions realize the need to conscientiously dissuade students from taking paths where experience and data show that they are likely to fail. This relates to not only choosing courses properly, but helping them understand the full financial costs and challenges of an education. Tuition, textbooks, rent, transportation, balancing work, and so on. Our students come from a wide variety of life experiences, and that includes, of course, financial experience, financial means, and financial education. These factors do not always sum to a successful ability to navigate the financial aid process in all of its elements. We need to design paths that ensure a consistent student experience through financial aid, as well as every resource available to our students, and within the college culture, accept a broader integration of that responsibility. I'd like to now introduce Jennifer Hicks, the ASB representative for student services. So solutions must consider the many points of entry doors for admissions to LBCC by, um, sorry, I have a different slide. <laughs> A major problem that we've discovered is that many students are involved with so many programs and co-curricular activities that they turn to their faculty members in, the pro in these programs for help. In turn, students often receive information that is sporadic or fragmented or often duplicated. Um, there needs to be a proper handoff procedure. When one faculty member does not have all of the information necessary, they need to know who the students can turn to for accurate information. We need to produce information that instills student self-reliance. One thing that we want to avoid is creating an environment where students are not made to be independent. We want to help them navigate college and the financial aid process successfully, but we do not want to hold their hands so much so that when they're turned loose, they're not adequately prepared. We can accomplish this by making information intuitively available, by making it sensible and easy to find, um, we must also enable feedback channels for students to receive timely answers to questions. As the rep of student services on the ASB cabinet, I have essentially become a walking complaints department. Coining this nickname has made me realize that as of now, I am one of the very few channels through which students can voice their concerns. This is an issue that affects the efficiency of every department at Long Beach City College. And with access to feedback from students, we could quantify and measure where the major problems really are. Our goal is to craft a reputation of LBCC being an intuitive college to attend. We want students 
especially new and prospective students, to be able to find what they need when they navigate our website. And as of now, it's kind of a scary process. Um, starting college is obviously scary for a lot of students, and if our processes are not intuitive, then finding information can become difficult, intimidating, and above all else, frustrating.